Hey everyone, welcome to the Flutter development series from Roman Just Codes, where I'll be developing beautiful user interfaces with Flutter. And in this video, I'll be diving into state management in Flutter using Change Notifier in order to make our apps more reactive to state changes. In this series, I've been building the UI for a fictional grocery and produce app. And for this episode, I'll be covering more on state management in Flutter, this time dealing with a Change Notifier class change notifier provider widget and the consumer widget while implementing the feature of adding items to a mobile shopping cart. Let's get started. This is pretty much what we'll be accomplishing in this video. At any given subcategory, I should be able to add it to my shopping cart only once and it marks itself as being added to the cart. The amount of items gets reflected in the little shopping cart badge. Switching back and forth on the same subcategory should persist this state. Navigating to a different subcategory, it should allow me to add it as well, marking itself as added and increment the item count in my shopping cart. Same as before, going back and forth on the subcategories should maintain their state during this session. Navigating back to the category list page, the shopping cart icon now shows a number next to it, the same number of shopping cart items we saw in the details page. And every time I add additional items to it, this number stays in sync across pages in a very seamless fashion. In upcoming videos, we'll be handling the removal of items from the cart, so this value should update as items get removed as well, so stay tuned for that. Let's proceed. So the ability to make this little batch here update as a user adds items, we could do it using the setState method of the state class, but it may require even rebuilding the whole page, thus decreasing performance and not efficient enough for this simple change. Same thing keeping this button in sync when this subcategory gets added to the cart, while at the same time adding the capability of updating that same value here in the category list page as well. It may look complex, but it's pretty easy. If you understand providers and how the data flows to its descendants, this is a variant of that, but more reactive to changes. In order to represent shopping cart items, we're going to need a model that holds that information for us. In the models folder, start by creating a file called cartitem.dart and add a corresponding class for it. Inside, add two properties, one called category, type category, another property called units, type int. This will represent a single cart item and will wrap the subcategory selected as well as how many of the same kind it will hold. Create the corresponding constructor for it. In the services folder, let's create a file called cartservice.dart and add a corresponding class for it. But this time, we'll do something different. We'll make this class extend the change notifier class. Change Notifier is a simple class included in the Flutter SDK which provides change notification to its listeners. In other words, if something is a change notifier, you can subscribe to its changes. It is a form of observable for those familiar with the term. We'll see in a minute what makes this class tick. Let's add a list of items type card item. This will hold the items we'll be adding to our shopping cart. I'll make it read-only by not only providing just a getter for it, but wrapping it inside an unmodifiable list view and only allow adding items to it via our service methods. Every time someone adds an item to this collection, we want to broadcast that this occurred, hence calling this special method called notify listeners. This is the only code that is specific to the change notifier, the call to notify listeners. This call tells the widgets that are listening to this model to rebuild. Simple as that. Now, how do we make it available to all widgets within this app? In the main.dart file, just wrap this service inside a change notifier provider. Just like the provider widget, the change notifier provider widget makes the service it wraps available to all descendant widgets, with the uniqueness that any changes that occur within this model will be broadcasted down the hierarchy and whoever is listening will react to it by rebuilding itself. Let's make use of this newly created service. In the details page widget, fetch our card service just like any other provided service using the provider.of syntax, passing the context, and even using the listen equals false flag. You guessed it, this is the flag that indicates whether you want to register this widget as a listener to changes in this model. Now, how do I make just this little text widget listen to changes and rebuild when the card items collection changes? Using the special widget called consumer. Just wrap the widget or widget structure that you need to be rebuilt upon changes occurring in your model. 
in the consumer widget. The builder function is the only required argument. Builder is a function that is called whenever the change notifier changes. Meaning, when you call notify listeners in your model, all the builder methods of all the corresponding consumer widgets are called. The builder is called with three arguments. The first one is the context, which you also get in every build method. The second argument is the instance of the change notifier. It's what we were asking for in the first place. The third argument is child, which is there for optimization. If you have a large widget subtree under your consumer that doesn't change when the model changes, you can construct it once and get it through the builder. It is best practice to put your consumer widgets as deep in the tree as possible. You don't want to rebuild large portions of the UI just because some details somewhere changed. That's why we're limiting the updates to just this widget. Just return the widget that will be rebuilt with the new broadcasted changes and you're done. In our case, we want to read the updated length on the card services items collection. Now you need someone to trigger the change and make the model call notify changes on our behalf. In the shopping cart buttons on click event, call the add method in the cart service, passing a valid cart item model built from this widget subcategory. Adding an item to the items collection via the add method will in turn call the notify listeners. And since a consumer widgets builder method gets triggered when this happens, it rebuilds its contents accordingly. Let's do a full rebuild and test our code. Click to add items to the shopping cart. And there you go. In a seamless and decoupled way, we updated elements in our UI without calling set state and in a very efficient manner, only rebuilding the elements that need it. Okay, now let's work on the button indicator that the item has been added to the shopping cart, shall we? So, in the cart service, let's add another method called is subcategory added to cart that returns a boolean if there's an item already in the cart with the subcategory we're trying to add. Just a simple check if the collection has any items, check for the existence of any items with the same subcategory name. For this, we'll do the same approach. We'll wrap our button inside another consumer widget. Same as before, wrap your content inside the builder method of the consumer widget. In this scenario, I'll be checking if my current subcategory hasn't been added to the cart. Then I display the regular button to add the cart item to the collection. Otherwise, I'll create a simple container with some padding and as a child, a row with its content center aligned and with a text widget, a size box widget, and an icon widget as its children. So again, if the current widget subcategory is not added as a cart item yet, show the button to add it. Else, show this structure that shows it's been added already. Let's do a full rebuild and try this implementation to see what we did. Okay, add the item to the cart, shopping cart shows one, and my button doesn't allow me to add more since it's already been added. Navigating back and forth still keeps the state, which is what we want. Navigate to a separate subcategory, correctly validates the subcategory hasn't been added, allows us to add it, and the shopping cart increments by one, and so forth. And that's the change notifier, change notifier provider, and the consumer widget in a nutshell. I'm going to continue refactoring other areas in the application where we still have the set state method to update the UI, such as the unit price widget here. We are still relying on feeding values through its constructor, so let's make this widget more decoupled and encapsulated. Let's go to the file for this unit price widget. But first, let's get rid of the values being passed via the constructor. Much better. Now back in the widget, let's invoke the category selection service as we need to tap into the currently selected subcategory. Let's populate its theme color, price and amount, now from within itself, for backwards compatibility. Let's make a tiny change to the subcategory model and we'll add an amount property, type int. We want to associate the amount of items per unit with the subcategory itself, for simplicity. Back in the widget, instead of using the widget property values, we actually want to read the values straight out of the service and not having to rely on the set state anymore. Remove the state and replace the widget dot amount by the services selected subcategory and tap into the newly added amount property. If the amount is less than 20, we want to allow them to increment it. 
Same thing with the decrementing mechanism. Only when the selected subcategory's amount is greater than zero, we can decrement. Get rid of the state and decrement the amount off of the selected subcategory. We'll use the consumer widget here as well, as the amount is what we want it to change when we increment and decrement. Simply wrap it inside a consumer widget inside the builder method. Replace the values accordingly and quickly check whether there's a subcategory selected so you can read the amount value off of the subcategory. Take it for a spin after a full reload. Go to the details page and try it out. Doesn't work. Why? Because the category selection service is not broadcasting the changes being made in its model at all. The consumer widget here is listening, but the category selection service is not notifying any one of the changes made. Let's make the required changes for this to happen. In the category selection service, make this class extend the change notifier class. And upon setting each category and subcategory, call the notify listeners method. Now, whoever is wired up to this service will receive a notification and thus rebuild itself. Wait, there's more. In the main.dart file, change the category selection service provider from a plain provider widget to a change notifier provider widget. In the unit price widget though, notice something. Here I do not have the listen equals false attribute. This means this whole widget would have rebuilt anyway, regardless of me having a consumer widget inside or not. But I still keep the consumer widget just in case down the line I want to optimize it a little bit, but for this small widget we are safe. In order to trigger the notify listeners method, I have to forcefully set the selected subcategory. For now, I'll just assign it to itself so the notify listeners gets called, but we'll refactor this in a minute to be more streamlined when it comes to incrementing and decrementing the value and notifying its listeners. Let's do a full reload and test. Items get added and removed accordingly, all thanks to the power of the change notifier class change notifier provider and consumer widget. And check this out, the state is maintained within each subcategory since the changes are made for each separate subcategory instance and changes are held in memory. Let me do some light refactoring of these max and min values for the bounds within which the user can set these values, as well as use these values to set the appropriate color to indicate whether the user can or cannot increment the amount. Test it again, now you should see the buttons looking like disabled when they hit the bounds on each end. Love it. And now for the final touch, let's show the shopping items count next to the shopping cart icon. Let's go to the category bottom bar widget and do some cleanup prior to tackling this. I'll change the color, splash and highlight color to keep it consistent across. Notice I didn't do anything to this one. It's because I'll refactor it so as to accommodate the items label. Let's make this into a clip or rect widget instead, with some border radius, with a material widget child, with white background, inkwell as a child, matching on splash and highlight color as the rest. Nothing on the tap event for now, but a child container with some padding, and inside our featured consumer widget, listening to card service updates. In its builder method, return a row widget, aligned center on both axes. And as its children, same icon as before, with a container widget wrapping the label, displaying the card item's length as a string. But only show this label if the count of items in the card is greater than zero, hence wrapping it inside a visibility widget. Otherwise, keep showing it like before, like a circle. Let's take it for a spin and check out what we did. We start with an empty shopping cart. Navigate to a subcategory and check the value of zero in the cart. Add to cart and see the number increment, both in the cart badge and in the bottom nav bar. Go to another subcategory, do the same, rinse and repeat. Very cool and so easy to make it happen, leveraging the existing infrastructure already in place. Nice. A 
as a final improvement. I'll do the refactoring I mentioned earlier, where I would encapsulate the incrementing and decrementing of the selected subcategories amount in the service instead of having to force the category and subcategory to be set so the listeners get notified. So let's do this the right way. In the category selection service, create a method called increment subcategory amount. All this will do is increment the amount property in the selected subcategory property and call the notify listeners if the selected subcategory is not null. Plain and simple. Create another method called decrement subcategory amount and do the same except for decrementing the amount property. I'll create a getter down here just to fetch the amount out of the selected subcategory for convenience and return a default value if the selected subcategory is not available. Back in the unit price widget, replace the selected subcategory amount by just subcategory amount and replace these two lines by just the increment subcategory amount method, replacing other spots accordingly. Let's take it for one last spin and see how it works. Loved how we were able to make it work, and then we optimized it by refactoring it, so it's not only clear, but more efficient as well. Nice, everything should be working as before, but our code is much cleaner and encapsulated. Thank you for keeping me honest. In the next video, we'll be tackling nested navigators, which allows us to create multiple navigation levels within a single app, in which we'll flesh out our custom bottom tap navigation bar further and hooking it up to the shopping list so we can view the items added and add the ability to remove them from the shopping cart list. See you on the next one. That's it for this video, so please stay tuned for more upcoming videos. Hit the subscribe button to stay updated and please like this video if you found it useful. Thank you so much for watching.